Let's bring in Michael Gagan now, political analyst. Michael, um, I just want to get your thoughts on the life and legacy of John Horgan. Well, John was a very decent man, and he is very well regarded by people right across the political spectrum. He was always someone who kept uh, the you know the concerns of average everyday working people, blue collar workers, etc. He tried to keep that um, foremost in his mind uh, as premier and as uh, and a cabinet minister, and before that as a ministerial assistant. And I had the opportunity to work with him in the 1990s. And, you know, he, he always remained the same decent guy who had blue collar values. And he, he, he took them, those values with him when, you know, he, as he eventually became premier. Uh, he, he was certainly someone who was com committed to looking after the plight of the average person. And, and, uh, and so as such, he's respected by, you know, new Democrats, liberals, conservatives alike. As you mentioned, for someone that did work with him early on and then was able to watch his career progress to reaching the heights that it did to become premier of British Columbia, firstly in a minority situation and then forming a majority government shortly after that. Talk about his legacy in Victoria, in the halls of power. You talked about him as, as a guy that kept his blue collar roots, but as policy, uh, what legacy does it leave behind? Well, I think I, I think the main legacy he leaves behind uh, is is that um, that if you if you want to be popular in British Columbia, you have to put the needs of like average folks front and center. Uh, I think that's one of the legacies he he leaves behind, and certainly he brought a level of decency to politics uh, in British Columbia that, that is fondly remembered. So I think those are going to be two, two of his major legacies. I mean, there's obviously things that he tried to do in terms of striking a balance between environmental concerns and the, and the need to grow the economy so that people could have decent paying jobs. And, and that, and that's something that's not easy to do in British Columbia. So uh, he certainly strived to achieve that balance. Um, but, but I think, you know, um, He's someone that where there's a lesson for both sides of the political spectrum to take, which is, you know, put the working work, put the working man and woman first and you will find yourself very popular amongst the electorate uh, in general. On a personal note, what will be a lasting memory for you? John was uh, he, just his decency, uh, his sense of humor. Um, you know, he was a guy that um, even when we disagreed politically, um, you know, he was always affable and pleasant and, um, and never got, never let the political get, get in the way of the personal, at least, at least in his dealings with me. So, uh, I will always fondly remember him and, um, he will certainly be missed. And I just want to point out in the short time that we do have left, uh, his family, the statement from the family, I find it very fitting for myself who covered BC politics for many years as well, uh, knowing him in and around the halls of power, uh, at the legislature building in Victoria, uh, it was quite well known that he was a big fan of the Star Trek franchise. And so they, fin <laughs> they finished their family statement by saying live long and prosper. Quite fitting indeed. Yeah, he was, he was, he was totally a Trekkie. And <laughs> uh, I, I respected that about him too. <laughs> All right, Michael Gagan, I really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks so much for your insights into uh, former BC Premier John Horgan, who has died at the age of 65. Thanks again. Thank you.